Look how they massacred my boy. Remember the good old days when an Indiana Jones film was a guaranteed blast at the movies? Remember the thrilling action and iconic scenes that stuck with us? Well, after watching the fifth and final chapter of the Indiana Jones saga, I couldn't help but ask myself those very same questions. What I saw on the big screen was a depressing, at times boring, and an all-around uninspired story that can't find a good reason to bring back one of the most iconic heroes of all time and do something new, or at least fun and interesting with him. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself here, but it was a big disappointment, and one of the worst movies I've ever seen this year. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny had it rough to begin with. It's the first time that the series goes on without Steven Spielberg as director and George Lucas involved in the story. However, I trusted that the talented James Mangold could at least bring something worthwhile. I mean, he has experience dealing with old iconic characters as we saw in Logan, and he has a keen eye for action scenes as we saw in Ford B. Ferrari. Sadly, it misses the mark trying to recapture the magic of past movies or going in in a fresh new direction. As a matter of fact, the whole movie is basically about reflecting about the past while presenting Indy as a man that refuses to move on and that the world seems to have forgotten about him. Which sounds like a cool thing to develop, right? However, its approach is very superficial and poorly executed, mainly because instead of exploring those ideas, the film dangles so many member berries in front of you in a desperate attempt to care about what's going on, and it all starts with the overly long prologue. The movie kicks off with a de-aged Harrison Ford alongside a previously unknown sidekick, Basil Shaw, on a mission to stop Nazi looters in 1945. But everything changes when they discover that the eponymous dial crafted by Greek physicist Archimedes is now in the mix. While Shaw's role is small, it's wonderfully played by Toby Jones and it's a very entertaining character, and even manages to give a more emotionally charged moment a bit later in the movie during a flashback. Now, I gotta say that the prologue is quite fun, and at times feels like old school Indiana Jones, but I gotta be honest here, I couldn't get too invested in it because the CGI on Harrison Ford was very distracting for me. Sure, it looks better than Princess Leia on Rogue One, and the fact that the whole sequence happens during nighttime to try to hide Harrison's dead-eyed plastic face helps quite a bit, but it just gave me an Uncanny Valley vibe. Besides, if you thought Kingdom of the Crystal Skull had an over-reliance on CGI and the refrigerator scene was just too unrealistic, well, you ain't seen nothing yet. Indy is basically a superhero now, and instead of capturing the look and feel of the exciting opening of The Last Crusade, I felt I was watching an outtake of the Polar Express, where everything is so fake that it's hard to get invested in the action and the stakes are basically non-existent. Then we get a time jump to 1969 where the Apollo 11 astronauts have just returned from the moon. But while the world looks at the future, we find that Indy is stuck in the past as an old, drunk, lonely and depressed old man. Which is pretty on brand for Disney Lucasfilm. Go away! This could work as an interesting theme of the dangers of not moving on, but the movie just barely touches the subject along the way. Also, I'm not totally against the idea of painting a classic character as a failure, but it should be done in a way that justifies it or adds meaning to the story. Here, it felt like the movie took pleasure in tarnishing Indy's legacy. I mean, at the end of Crystal Skull, Indy is rewarded with a dean position at Marshall College and a loving family after a lifetime of adventures, only for this movie to rip that all away from him. He's now divorced, his son is gone, and he's retiring at a generic school where the students couldn't care less about him. This is where his goddaughter Helena, played by Phoebe Waller-Bridge, comes into play. But I didn't like her character at all. She's not funny or charismatic enough to be a worthy successor for Harrison Ford as the movie tries to paint her to be. Besides, the part has all the traits of a Disney Lucasfilm female character, of being written better than the male protagonist just because she's a woman, while having all the quips, never losing an argument, and she's always proven right. Also, she's always belittling Indy at every chance she gets, and is so good at everything she does that I kept thinking why she needed him in the first place. 
While on paper the character could be interesting as a reflection of a fortune and glory driven version of Indiana, just like we saw in Temple of Doom, the characters don't really clash or create a lot of personal drama. In fact, the movie struggles to define Helena's character consistently. She doesn't go through the whole dilemma of whether to sell an artifact or honor her father's lifelong work. It's more like she flips from one feeling to another without much explanation. This also applies to her feelings about Indiana as well, culminating on a very forced change of heart that doesn't feel organic and it happens just so that the characters can have a happy ending. Another character that is a letdown is Dr. Jürgen Voller, a former Nazi now working for the US government, played by Mats Mikkelsen, who wants to use the dial to go back in time and have Germany win the war. Mikkelsen does a fine job and steals almost every scene he's in, but I couldn't find the character as menacing enough to be memorable. It's also a missed opportunity, as Voller's motives could have been explored as a parallel to Indy's own desires mainly because we get an emotional scene with Indy and Helena on a boat where he expresses what he would do if he could go back in time and what he would change about his past regrets, which seems like a great setup, but the movie never delivers a satisfying payoff, it just tosses it aside, leaving Indy without a cathartic resolution. Hats off to Harrison Ford though, he really gives it his all, but here's the bummer, the rest of the movie just can't measure up to his performance. It teases us with the potential significance of the Dial of Destiny, especially as we near the climax, where the movie takes the sole bold and creative twist in the story just to squander it at the end and do nothing with it, which leaves the whole concept feeling wasted, ending it all on a whimper and devoid of any emotional payoff. This issue stems from James Mangle's direction, it doesn't find fun and creative ways to tell the story, not even in crafting exciting action set pieces. Dial of Destiny stumbles from one scene to the next, and the action just doesn't have the trademark magic of past films. You know what I mean? In Spielberg's Indiana Jones movies, there was always this fun energy in the fights and stunts that got you hooked. You could feel the stakes, understand the layout of the action, and a fun spirit to top it all off. Unfortunately, in Dial of Destiny, it's a different story. The action falls flat, rushing past us too quickly to make a real impact, and way too reliant on CGI. Of course, I don't expect an 80-year-old Harrison Ford to do any meaningful stunts, but the action is just dull. Even John Williams's perfect score struggles to elevate it, even though there are some soft moments where the music hits just right. And the cinematography doesn't help much either, with serviceable camera work that's heavily CGI induced and an overly warm color palette that is so monotonous that I dare you to tell apart the American scenes and the Middle Eastern ones. Also the film can't justify its duration by having a sluggish pace and editing that just seems to mash scenes together that lack any emotional connection. Just like the ending, which is so tonally disjointed from the rest of the movie that it feels like the most audience tested vanilla ending that doesn't give a sense of closure to a 40 year old saga, just like Rise of Skywalker. As a rule of thumb, every time I watch a legacy sequel I ask myself, why is it necessary to bring back this classic character or story? Why is there more to tell? And in the case of Indiana Jones, since we already had a perfect ending with The Last Crusade and a wholesome one with Crystal Skull, why does he need to come back? Well, Dial of Destiny doesn't seem to have an answer for those questions besides trying to make a quick buck, which ironically, I don't believe it will. There is very little to know more about the character of Indy that we haven't seen before, and the movie gives us a sad and pathetic version of the character that's the antithesis of what George Lucas and company created. Gone is the adventurous spirit of past movies, the uplifting story, and memorable moments. Not even a powerful performance by Harrison Ford and a masterful score by John Williams can rescue a movie so directionless and frankly, soulless. It tries to open up a conversation of letting go of the past and move forward, but with each passing scene, the movie refuses to do that by reminding us just how much fun Indiana Jones's past adventures were. As a fan, I really try to love this movie, but at the end of the day, I felt that the whole thing was a wasted opportunity, nostalgia bait, and a counterfeit Indiana Jones movie. Let me know what you think of the movie in the comments, and I'll see you on the next one.